Welcome to tutorial 13, Facade Wizard. The tutorial documentation PDF shows some advanced examples of how the Facade Wizard can be used to create facade rules with different levels of detail and the insertion of customized asset. This is usually the advanced workflow, so here I want to show the quick and dirty approach. Now, since facade rules always just work on vertical polygons, the first step again, as described in the advanced version in the tutorial PDF, is first we have to create fa vertical facades. For this I have created uh, this demo mass uh, CJ rule and applied to this, uh, this footprint which I have created manually. Now I'm going to generate this model here with Control G. Now we see that um, the lot here, the, the start rule, this geometry is extruded and then we just take the side uh, polygons of the mass model which was, uh, which was just generated and then the facade is written into um, a simple geometry here. So this is the very first starting geometry which we will use in the upcoming example. Now the second step is I'm going to quickly preview the facade photograph which I have here. So when we look at this example uh, we see that the image is actually just a photograph so there is some perspective in it and we cannot use this properly in the facade wizard so we are going to use it brand new tool in City Engine 2012 which is the crop image tool. So I'm going to fire this one up and then it takes a second to load the tool and there we are. So what we see here is on the left hand side the input image and on the, on the right hand side we see there is a file written which is called uh, underscore cropped. So this is um, the part, the partial um, region which is displayed on the left hand side inside this colorful rectangle. Now this is a little bit tricky image um, but when loading City Engine actually analyzes the picture and tries to find the best perspective. In this case it didn't find it perfectly so let's just go in and uh, edit the lines accordingly. Now obviously the goal is to find a, a good matching perspective um, rectangle to be able to, to crop out a rectangular version of this facade. So the navigation works the same again with Alt and the right mouse button and Alt and the middle mouse button. So I'm going in here and just blocking out this facade. Also I'm going to fix the left hand side. Doesn't have to be perfect but uh, yeah okay. So I am happy with the version I have just created. So I'm going ahead and I'm saving the image by hitting the F or the hitting the finish key. So here is again the cropped image. Now this image we can use for the actual creation of the facade rule. So let's go ahead and open the facade wizard. Let's open the picture and City Engine asks for a default width. I'm going to ignore this at the moment and just uh, go on and continue with 30. That's okay for me. Now I'm going to start with a series of splits um, for the main floors. I'm going back to this later on uh, in the second part where I explain a, s a second idea or a second concept. So I'm going to first split off the main floors here. So I'm going to click here and here and here and here. Something like this. Okay. 
Now the next step is that since the facade may be growing smaller or larger depending on what the input facade geometry is, I'm going in and I'm actually going to create some repetitive splits here. So the, this part here in the middle, this is possible to be repeated vertically. So I'm going in and uh, I'm going to define this as floating. And in CGA code, by the way, this is the, the tilde sign. So this is a floating length which uh, can measure. And then I'm going to define a, re a floor repeat of one tile. And again, one here and again, one here. Now I'm going in and I'm splitting off um, the repetitive um, parts here. I'm going to split with one split and this I'm going to define as repetitive horizontally and I'm going to choose this as the tile, this is already okay. Then in here I'm going to repeat all the tiles. In here I'm going to do it like so. A single one in the middle, floating on one side, floating on the other side and repeat this tile here. And here I'm going to choose the middle one, select region, to choose this one for the texturing for the other sh uh, shapes on the sides. And then up here I'm going to say, so this is absolute, this is floating, this is absolute. And then I'm repeating, um, let's say this image here, set select region. Now I'm going in and I'm detailing a little bit more of the geometry here. So I'm, uh, I'm going in and I'm going to split, for example, this part here, first vertically, then horizontally. And I'm now I'm going to define the width of this shape here. So I'm going to right mouse click on this shape and say set region width. So I assume that this is about 1.2 meters wide. And now all the, all the other dimensions have been adapted. So I'm going in and use the Z adjust to move these shapes back to give it some volumetric appearance. Now up here uh, in this position you see the value which gets updated. So at the moment this shape has been moved back about 25 centimeters. So this is okay for the moment. Um, yeah. So let's continue with this window here. Uh, let me split this uh, that way and then again vertically. I'm not gonna make this too perfectly move the windows a little bit back 15 centimeters that's okay go on to the next one this guy here I'm gonna uh, do just very simple like so like so like so and also move this shape back here 20 how much 15 yeah let's go back to 15 um, the same thing here. What should I do here? Let me keep it all simple. Actually, let me cut off these two side parts. And then vertically and horizontally. Now, by using the left and right keys on the keyboard you can toggle between the different split types and move back 15 centimeters. And now on the ground floor uh, the left hand side is treated a little bit different than, than the, the right hand side so I'm going to split that way and move this shape here way back so for example so let's say six, 60 centimeters and to the same here with different dimensions. 
like uh, so and move it back a little bit too. Now it seems, ah oh, here I have forgotten this part here in the middle because this is single. I want to keep this as a single window in the middle because this part is different than or differently textured than this part. So I'm going to continue here quickly and uh, do the same again here. And the same on this side. Click, click, and move these again back 15 centimeters. Now, this should do for the facade creation or for the rule creation. So let's go ahead and save this rule as gen facade facade crop. That's okay. I'm going to save this for now and uh, close the facade wizard. So let's go ahead and open this rule file. We see that quite a lot of code has been generated. Um, so here's the text version of it. So let's go ahead and try out what happens with this rule. So I'm going back to my demo mass and in here I'm actually going to activate the import of the rule. I have prepared this already, so um, this should now work. So in the facade rule, I'm going to, uh, or in, in the facade file, I'm going to trigger the facade rule. And now let's see whether this works. And we see that it actually did work. So that is beautiful. Um, let's change some of the dimensions here. So I'm going to um, just edit these points of the uh, of the footprint and actually let me deactivate the wireframe with the 7 key by the way that's found here and let me move these points over and now you see that all the facades update almost in real time and let's try to make the building also a little bit higher to see whether uh, the, the rule also scales perfectly in the vertical uh, direction. So let's overwrite the value to say 50. Oh, I see there is a little issue in the um, in the dimension of the very first split of the uh, <coughs> of the ground floor, but uh, we could go in and try to fix this in the code. So this should be here. That's the wrong rule file. So let me open the correct one and find the position that should be here. Regenerate and yeah, that did the trick. So uh, we see that now the, the rule has been finished and it also has a volumetric appearance with all the splits which inset these windows into the uh, into the wall or define the, the certain volumetric thickness. So this is uh, working perfectly so far. Now I've prepared a little bit something else here um, as a second way how to produce the geometries. Now in this case here uh, we have we are triggering directly a rule on a full facade shape. So the shape is um, actually this high as the full facade. Now depending on how you write the whole code for your buildings as for example in one of the last tutorials we have seen that uh, you could also write your rule as a recursion. So in, in that case you would get one shape for each of the floors and for this we have entered or we have included a specific way to trigger specific code uh, or specific rules for um, single facades newly in City Engine 2012's facade wizard and you see that here so there is a currently an unused rule which is called facade trigger and I and I is the index 
of the specific um, uh, floor which you want to trigger which is defined within uh, the facade wizard rule. And now he in here in this rule here you see that uh, there's also a constant which is written n equals 5. So there are five original floors in this um, facade. And that was uh, when I mentioned I'm first going uh, to split the facade into its main um, its into its main components. And that way I can also go in and for example trigger um, specific facades on specific shapes. So I'm going to going ahead and activate this rule here and relink the start rule to lot underscore two. Now what we are doing here is it's it's looking a little bit messy, but what we are actually doing is just on the ground floor we are triggering the ground floor and on all of the upper floors I'm just triggering a random floor of the upper floors. Now how did I do this? Um, just after the component split of the mass this facade 2 rule is defined and then within that one I'm splitting off the ground floor as GF as the, sh as the shape which is called GF like uh, ground floor and then all of the up upper floor um, or the upper floor shape I'm splitting into as many upper floors as it is possible and each of those goes into the UF into the upper floor shape and then I'm basically just pointing to, to a specific index so I know that the lowest index is my ground floor within the um, within the imported facade rule so on the ground floor I'm using um, zero and on the upper floor I'm using a, ra uh, a random value between one which is basically the one above zero and the number of um, floors there is actually defined so facade.n that go goes and grabs uh, the value which is defined here and then since it is a random value uh, we have to round it off for a full number of floors. So this is just creating a random uh, number between 1 and 5 but you could also go in and add any other function which uh, maps for example uh, the actual floor to its best position as it was in the beginning. But uh, that was um, that is completely up to you. So that's the conclusion for this facade wi wizard video and I hope you learned something in this too and that's it for the video tutorials for now.